everyone welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be talking about greenwashing what it is where you can find it and why it's bad greenwashing is defined as a deceptive marketing tactic used by companies and organizations to persuade the public that their products business organization policies is environmentally friendly this term was coined in 1986 by environmentalist jay westerfeld so greenwashing is basically lying. It's presenting a company or a product as something that's environmentally friendly, sustainable. All of those sort of buzzwords are being used to make it seem like they're actually doing those things when in reality they're just tricking the customer into purchasing their items or getting involved with their organization when in reality they're not doing any of those things at all and they're actually very not environmentally friendly. So now I'm going to go over 10 signs of greenwashing. So number one is something that I already sort of mentioned. It's fluff language. So these are words or terms with no clear meaning. So eco-friendly or green or sustainable, all those kinds of words being used when they don't have any actual meaning or action behind them. They're just fluff words used to make a company sound better than they are. Number two is green product versus a dirty company. An example of this would be energy efficient light bulbs being made in a factory that's polluting the nearby river. Number three, suggestive pictures. Green images that indicate a unjustified green impact. So this would be like flowers blooming out of an exhaust pipe. Number four is irrelevant claims. This is emphasizing one green attribute when everything else that they're doing is not green. So an example of this would be like jeans that are made with 100% recycled cotton, but say the process that they're using to recycle the cotton is wasting a lot more water than they should be, and they're using a lot of chemicals. So that would be an example of this because all they're saying is that they're using recycled cotton when in fact they're still creating a huge impact on the environment in their process. Number five is best in class. This is when a company declares that they're greener than everyone else and therefore better when everyone else can be completely terrible. Number six is just not credible. So claims like eco-friendly cigarettes that just don't make sense. Greening a dangerous product won't make it better or safe. Number seven is jargon. So this is information and terms that only scientists could understand. Number eight is imaginary friends. So this is in an advertisement, a company may mention a organization or a seal that they have that's eco-friendly when in fact this claim that they're making of an organization or a stamp of approval does not exist at all. Number nine is no proof. So a company makes a claim, it sounds like it could be true, believable, but there's no proof anywhere on their website or anywhere that you can find that can back up their claim. Number 10, and unfortunately a common one, is outright lying. They have totally fabricated claims and data. A major example of greenwashing is the oil company Chevron commissioned a series of TV and print ads to broadcast its environmental dedication. But while the now infamous People Do campaign ran, Chevron was violating both the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act, as well as spilling oil into protected areas for wildlife. In a den high in Montana's Blackfeet country, a grizzly settles for a long winter's nap. Unaware that down below, people with motors and machinery will explore for oil through deep winter. But before she wakes, the people will be gone. The explored land will be replanted so it will soon look as if no one had ever been there. Do people sometimes work through the winter so nature can have spring all to herself? People do. In 1991, chemical company DuPont announced double-hauled oil tankers with ads featuring marine animals prancing in chorus to Beethoven's Ode to Joy. It turned out that company was the largest corporate polluter that year in the United States. Recently, DuPont announced that its energy unit Conoco would pioneer the use of new double-hauled oil tankers in order to safeguard the environment.
So this is a perfect example of greenwashing. They're appearing to the public that they care about these animals. They make it appear like they're a happy company when in reality they're destroying what they're showing in their advertisements. Real quickly, these are some other major examples of greenwashing. The bottled water industry, I mean, it's pretty clear that they're a major polluter and this is what they sort of advertise like. Greenpeace, they advertised in a very bad way on a very important part of land. They advertised on the Nazca lines and claimed that they wanted to help protect them when in reality they were damaging it and I don't believe that they maybe purposely did this but it definitely was in bad taste and another example of greenwashing and another example of a company going in and destroying something that they're claiming to protect. So now that we've talked about greenwashing and you really know what it looks like and how to avoid it, I want to share a little bit about actual green marketing. So companies that are actually sustainable and eco-friendly and how they're advertising. So generally, actually sustainable companies are going to be very transparent and honest with you and they're going to be posting all of the things that they are doing to be more sustainable very clearly on their website, their social media. It should be very easy to access and when a company is actually green, it should fit some of these criteria. It should of course be manufactured in a sustainable fashion. It should be free of toxic materials and ozone depleting substances. If it's not bio degradable or compostable, it should at least be recyclable or made from recycled materials. It should not be made from materials harvested in a protected area or negatively impact a endangered or threatened species with their harvest. It should be fair trade, so it shouldn't be manufactured with any slave labor or workers who are not fairly paid. It shouldn't use excessive packaging, so the less packaging the better, especially when it comes to plastics. And it should be designed to be repairable and not disposable. So these are all the sort of criteria that you should be looking for when a company is claiming to be sustainable and claiming to be green and they're actually backing it up with real evidence and facts that support their claims. These are the main criteria of how their products should be made and packaged. So some of the labels that are being widely used and often aren't backed up with actual evidence are eco-friendly, natural, organic, green. And this is why they can be confusing to consumers because they're very generic in general. When you start to get more specific claims like Fair Trade or Leaping Bunny Certified, that's the cruelty-free organization, it's a lot harder to fake those because there's actual real consequences for lying about having those certifications. So when shopping or uh, looking around at organizations, I would say focus on the more specific claims and the seals of approval by actual companies or organizations that you can actually research. So all in all, greenwashing is a horrible thing taking over the sort of eco-friendly, sustainable industry. And it's something that the consumer unfortunately has to be very vigilant about because companies are going to try to market to you and try to get everyone and anyone to purchase their products. So as the consumer, it's your responsibility to do the research and check in on these companies and see if they're being as transparent as they're claiming and giving you the evidence to back up their claims. We can only do our best, so trying your best and really being mindful of what you're buying is the most important thing. And if you ever get fooled by greenwashing, don't feel too bad, just learn from it and try to do better next time. It's what greenwashing is designed to do, so it's bound to happen. It's happened to me. The main thing we can do as consumers is start calling out these companies that are making false claims and ask for more transparency and try to purchase things from the companies that are actually being transparent and truthful with their claims. So that's all about greenwashing. If you've ever experienced a major example of greenwashing, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I come out with new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and sometimes Saturdays. So I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!